A NAS server is a pretty simple concept. It basically stands for Network Attached Storage. And today I'm going to be making my own. Now obviously there's a multitude of reasons that I'd want to do this. Um, in particular, I have some final footage every time I get done with a video. I like a safe place to store the thumbnail, the description, all that information. So in case something ever happens, I have a whole um, basically storage library of all that information. But it has practical business applications too. Maybe you're, you know, a doctor or somebody out there that really has important information that needs to be stored. Now obviously I'd go a couple other steps making sure that I encrypted this. But if someone really wants to find my videos, they're already out there on YouTube and I really don't need I really don't particularly care as long as I have a safe place to store them. So this will be a basically serve as a server that will not have any outside internet access that will basically just be a safe drive pretty much for me to put all of my final footage when I'm done with it on here. So today I'm going to go over all the important components I've chosen for this. Obviously keep in mind I'm trying to keep this under $100 which is kind of the title of this video as well. And I'm going to do this all for $100. Now if you don't know a little bit of my back history I'm actually a strong believer in recycling especially computer component parts. Now I understand that you can't recycle everything and especially because stuff goes out to date but this is kind of my main, you know, goal, and I have a strong belief in that, basically. So a lot of this stuff will actually either be from the garbage, or will be basically recycled. Now, obviously, this cooler right here, I've gotten for free because I reviewed it, and I'm going to use it because I think it's pretty cool, and it's a nice low-profile cooler. But besides that, that's the only new, relatively new thing. Now, this was a yard sale find, and I'll go over each one of these things that I've found. So starting off with one of the most important components of all is just the motherboard and CPU. Now, for an i5... That's a pretty good option just for simple tasks. Now this is an old i5, it's an i5-760, which in case you don't recognize the name, it's a first gen i5. And obviously I'm not trying to do any gaming on here, while well, it would be pretty good for gaming, especially at this price, not what I'm going for here. And this cooler on it, I like it because it keeps it nice and cool, it keeps it around 70 degrees at max load. Now obviously well, you're not going to be stressing out a processor at max load, so it's not really a big concern. Um, especially when you're just putting video writing and reading video files, you're not going to be having a stressed out processor. But I do need to stay nice and cool so nothing bad happens. So next up, let's talk about a little bit of the other things. Because we've got, you know, our little base system, the RAM and the mother, or the CPU and the motherboard. But we also got some RAM. So we got 4 gigabytes of RAM on here. Now keep in mind, people, I don't know, big YouTubers like Linus Tech Tips or something, have massive amounts of RAM. They have something like 128 gigabytes on their storage systems. Now, for me to just explain a little bit of how that works, this basically serves as index of where everything is stored. When I'm only going to have three, relatively, gigabytes, or terabytes, of storage to store all my drives on, now this will be backed up in, in RAID 1, I really don't need large amounts of RAM. Now, when you're talking with something around 100 terabytes, then yeah, you do need a large amount of RAM, and that's, I'm not denying that. But since this is a small so, kind of server, just to keep some relatively small files in a safe place, this is basically what I'm kind of building this for, and that's why I've chosen 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now, power supply here. Power supplies are a really good thing because if you find a nice brand, you really don't have to worry about it. Yes, this may not be a, this is a, not a fully modular power supply, obviously, but I like it, I like it because I'm not going to put one of my nice power supplies in here because I'm not really going to have to worry about seeing this. This is supposed to be something that I just need to be reliable, have everything I need, have all the support for all the hard drives, and not, nothing really besides that. So right here I've got a bunch of hard drives. Now this is just one terabyte drive. So now I've got two high performance drives to serve in RAID 1 for my OS and some of the basic storage files, reading and writing. And then I've got some Hitachi Dust Stars, which are also 7200 RPM, but I do like them just because they are reliable and a good storage option. Now obviously this is a good little bit of drives. They'll all be in RAID 1, so I will basically have three terabytes of storage, which I can always upgrade at a later time. I can always get a RAID card or something like that. Obviously this only has three um, SATA cable options or SATA ports, but I do think that's a great option just to be able to expand with the multiple PCIe lanes. Now an important thing is graphics cards. Now people always argue, they're like, you know, what graphics card do you need for a server? Well first of all, you're not going to be needing any graphics card. This is a really, really old Quadro that was also dug out of the trash, which really does serve a great option because it just outputs video. Now I could use the onboard video, but I prefer to just use this because it's uh, not really any difficulty just to have the direct um, display port option when it's not even on the motherboard. So I, I, I really didn't feel like finding an adapter, so that is why we are using the graphics card, that particular graphics card. Now obviously I got a bunch of SATA cables and that's pretty much it. 
But um, I'm gonna go through now and of course talk about this case. Now this case was 10 bucks at a yard sale. Now there's pretty much nothing to describe besides that. I unboxed it for a video. I haven't actually booted it up yet, so this is gonna be my first time at least opening up this case and you know starting building a system with it. I'm not gonna take out the plastic wrap because I do want to kind of keep it in pristine condition. And of course, if I need to tear this apart and use this for somebody else, or maybe give it away, because I am help working on developing someone's system for budget PC. Um, but basically what we're gonna do is we're going to start building this, get into it, and show you kind of the building process in which I've chosen. And then, of course, you can see how I go about, you know, designing this build layout. Obviously, keep in mind, this is not a pretty pristine power supply, so this will be a little bit more difficult challenge to keep everything looking good. But without further ado, let's get into the actual building of the system. So, RAM is, as I said, not that important. And for especially with DDR3, as I said, it's not a big deal to have some RAM that is not necessarily the most newest thing. Now obviously the biggest concern, especially when you're going for a NAS rack, or especially a NAS server, is that you need just the most storage options you can, most storage interface possible, which obviously there are companies out there that offer you know massive amounts of storage, but they're expensive, and especially when you can have an option like this with three or six ports, obviously you can get some nicer, higher quality drives. That's basically what you're looking at, is just having that option there. I like the motherboards that include at least a few and of course you can always get motherboards with more, especially my motherboard my main system now has 10, so of course you could always go about doing that how you'd like. Cigarette it looks like snow. So I know this isn't the most fanciest or well-built system that I've ever done, but I was just trying to do this to proof of concept. It's not something that's really going to be looked at from the side, and I wanted to keep everything intact, so if I ever need to take the system apart and use it for something different, I've got that option as well. Um, I did lose the AI or IO shield, and that was sorry, that was just a little late. And uh, I didn't decide to side mount the graphics card simply because I didn't have an extension for it, and there's really no point in mounting an old quadro. I'm sorry. Um, I do like the fact though that this will basically serve pretty well. I like the fact that there was a lot of drive bays, and that you actually had room to put all those drives. Um, I didn't put any um, CD players or anything in there because obviously this, there's not enough room to put that on there on the motherboard. Obviously, since we're trying to get every last SATA port available, but uh, now we've got a nice network option and uh, we're going to be pretty good for uploading and saving on a pretty much a dedicated um, backup drive. So that will be awesome. But without further ado, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you watch the end, you need to go comment something very nice uh, like that, and I'll make sure I thank you down below. And of course, as always, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.